Look, Obama did put Citibank in charge of his cabinet, and then he received over half a million dollars in speeches to Wall Street. Look, you don't get paid that much money to call them a bag of rotting cocks wrapped in pus covered <laughs> greed for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You just don't, right? You get paid to be a celebrity, smile, wave, and then say, good job, all your dads love you for like 30 minutes, right? Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, just a quick note before we di dive into this episode. This was recorded in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. And if you want to be part of the virtual live stand-up comedy shows, you totally can. Uh, tickets are available for these shows right now. They are in the description below. They're happening on Friday nights. They're happening Friday nights. Uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. They're $5 tickets, and each week uh, is new material, so you can get multiple different uh, tickets for multiple different shows. And not only that, but we also help a grassroots organization or a grassroots venue, activist or journalist, uh, because uh, we all got to take care of each other. So uh, each week is a different uh, grassroots organization for this show the show that you're about to watch we donated half of our ticket sales to a movement for a people's party uh, who are actively working to organize to essentially make a a movement for a people's party a period a party that is more representative of the people than corporations and uh, they're they're awesome uh, I've had Nick Brana, one of the founders on the show, on my uh, interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, several different times. He's fantastic. Uh, so uh, if you want to donate to them, if you want to learn more about them, uh, peoplesparty.org. You can find the link in the description below. If you want to attend them, like I said, there's tickets uh, to these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. But if you want a free ticket, you can become a sustaining member. You can become a sustaining member right at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N dot com. You can become a sustaining member directly on my website through Patreon or via Bandcamp. Through this, you get free tickets to these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. You, you get uh, uh, un unreleased exclusive stand-up comedy and storytelling material. You get uh, bonus merch. Uh, and you get early access to larger full episodes of Fork Full of Noodles like this one that you're watching right now. Uh, so go to krishmohan.com, check out those future dates, and I hope to see you at a show. And now, without any further ado, let's, so let's start here. Uh, so it's election year in the United States. You know what that means. That means a lot of people are going to be yelling on social media about how if you don't vote for their candidate of choice, you're probably just as bad as Hitler. <laughs> And, and, and we should probably cancel you as a person. All right? And this year, yeah, yeah and this year the yeah. contention is at an all-time high, right? There are some folks that believe the only way to move forward is voting blue no matter who, right? And this is just a, the people's desperate attempt to get Trump out of the White House. Right? This is the establishment Democrats' desperate attempt to keep gaslighting the American people into thinking that they are the party of morality. Look, here's the reality. Voting blue no matter who is not going to fix things. Right? Donald J. Trump didn't create racism. He does use it for his advantage because he's the representative of a broken system. The same broken system that Joe Biden is a part of. Same broken system that has both parties gleefully practicing discrimination of all kinds, right? Lest we forget that the queen of the warmongers and Democratic high priestess Hillary Clinton, she did call black kids super predators 
and was against gay marriage. Democrats have signed tough on crime bills, which disproportionately put black people in prison. Uh, and Barack Obama, AKA King progressive neoliberal, which super gross statement to say out loud, if you're wondering, uh, very gross. Uh, he deported more immigrants than his Republican predecessors. And this isn't an ex excuse to let Republicans off the hook, right? They're just more blatant with their ignorance and dislike for civil rights. It's like going to see a band you like. You know, you know they're going to play the hits, and the Republicans consistently play the hits of homophobia and racism and just a dash of anti-socialism. Just a little bit, just not a lot. You know, just a small amount. And the Democrats are pretending like they have new songs, but then wind up just playing the same hits. And, and then you realize that most of their band is just from the Republicans' band. <laughs> so, yeah. so in reality, the Democrats are just like a Republican cover band. Which is gotta gross. play those hits. <laughs> gotta play the hits. <laughs> gotta play those yeah. hits. <laughs> it's what we want, baby. <laughs> Don't try the new stuff. We gotta keep to keep it to the hits. <laughs> and look, Trump also didn't invent greed, right? He is one of the many benefactors of it. Look, Obama did put Citibank in charge of his cabinet, and then he received over half a million dollars in speeches to Wall Street. Look, you don't get paid that much money to call them a bag of rotting cocks wrapped in pus covered <laughs> greed for an hour. <laughs> you just don't, right? You get paid to be a celebrity, smile, wave, and then say, good job, all your dads love you for like 30 minutes, right? <laughs> and that is the actual transcript from Obama's speeches. All of Wall Street's dads loved him, according to Obama. <laughs> but if you remember during this recent pandemic that we just had, both parties doled out money to help Wall Street while the American people had to wait for a month for a one-time payment of $1,200. And that was an agreement made behind closed doors with no representation from the people. Now, apparently, the meeting went till about 2 a.m., which is well past the bedline, bedtime of the average oppressor, you know. <laughs> I like to go to bed at a, at a, at a decent hour, you know. The, the early bird gets to slaves, you, you know, that old, old adage. <laughs> yeah. You guys remember that one? Did you guys learn that one at school? Now look, I, this, this meeting went on till the wee hours of the night. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they sealed this deal over like a blood orgy sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. And, and they all got a bottle with their names on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, that said Nancy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm only half sorry that you guys had to like picture uh, a blood orgy with Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi involved. Uh, but hey, I've been staring at this script for an entire week uh, and did that to myself too. So, you know, I only half feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to welcome to my week <laughs> so, sometimes i i write things and then i regret them and i was like man maybe i'll share it with everybody you know that's something that i do <laughs> and look we also have to remember that trump didn't create poverty he did redefine it though you know, poverty in the income divide was growing larger and more cavernous for the past decade. And that's what happens when you leave the economy to a bunch of hucksters, fraudsters, cheats, liars, fuckwads, and tricksters. These two parties are one and the same. And if we can start from there, we can realize that voting blue no matter who won't work. We'll wind up seeing the same history start over again. Right. If the, so if the Democrats lose, they'll go back to blaming Bernie Sanders, third parties, you know, Russia, your mother, 
Brush's mother. <laughs> and continue down this McCarthyist temper tantrum, like they're a spoiled teenager trying to celebrate their bat mitzvah quinceanera despite being white and Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> That one's not for you. <laughs> that one's not for you. And if they win, we'll have the same corporatist system as we did before, which will give rise to a, another fake populist billionaire to come in and say all the nice things that the working class wants to hear, only to cheat them out of it at the very end. So why take a step backwards and repeat this vicious cycle of abuse again, right? How many times do we need to hear the hits till we're sick of it. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty burned out to listening to free market bird. <laughs> <laughs> Song's too fucking long. Too fucking yeah. long. So is this duopoly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point with this duopoly, right? This duopoly has asked you to pick a color and drop your values. That's literally what vote blue no matter who is asking you to do. And you have to only pick between red or blue. I mean, for fuck's sake, guys, Crayola gives you more options than that. The, the, the Democratic Party, hey, I mean, the Democratic Party claims to be for inclusion and diversity, but has forgot how diverse the color spectrum actually is. It's Roy G. Biv, not RB. You know, what about Oi Give? Didn't think about those other letters, <laughs> did we? Look, this is spectral discrimination, and I, for one, will not stand for it. Okay? <laughs> so, so, to me, why, not, why are we not building a system that allows for more options instead of narrowing the field down to two bands of color both representing corporate and private interests. Look, after 22 years of living in this country, uh, it, you know, America, or as I like to politely call it, the corporate states of United American Exceptionalism, sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> after 22 years of living here, I, I finally got my citizenship. And this means that I finally have the right to vote. Now, the only reason I decided to do this and give up my Indian citizenship was to either vote for Tulsi Gabbard or Bernie Sanders. And because of the duopoly, the options are now down to two corporate, warmongering, woman-hating, egotistic, walking flesh piles of narcissism that have never cared about me as a citizen or an, or an immigrant. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I refuse to vote for either of them. Now... I do have a bunch of lefties and liberals and progressives and family and friends telling me that I have to hold my nose and vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, here's the thing. Voting shouldn't be treated like it's a fish market. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't hold your nose, make a decision, and then hope that that smell doesn't follow you home. <laughs> It will, and it will linger for decades. And the whole country, <laughs> the whole country will smell like a rotting fish carcass. So good. Yeah. So voting for me, voting for me, and I think every other immigrant that had to fight through xenophobia, racism, and pay a bunch of money to ascertain the right to vote. This isn't something that we take lightly, and, and neither should you as citizens, as, as someone that has had this right and privilege to vote. Americans have this very passive and passing relationship with voting, right? Americans just pull a lever and feel like the job is done, and they can sit back and keep watching NCIS till the cows come home. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Well, they, make, they make it very easy. You can uh, ignore <laughs> politics the whole year and then choose one of the two colors and pull that switch. <laughs> that is true. But here, here's the thing. Voting uh, isn't a half-hearted hand job, okay? You can't, just, <laughs> you can't just get through it watching Scott Bakula keep New Orleans safe. Like, <laughs> oh, God. Oh. 
which the only reason I know that reference is because my mom watches NCIS New Orleans and Scott Bakula is on that show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it doesn't, it, it, voting means something, right? It, it's about making sure that your beliefs are represented by the person that you pull the lever for. It's like a full hearted hand job, you know? Like with the TV off and like way too much eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a hand job that means something. <laughs> Vote blue no matter who is just a kitschy way of saying give up who you actually are and be who we tell you to be. You know, it encourages you to be disassociated with politics, which influences your day to day life. Vote blue no matter who is an incredibly offensive idea and is what we should be fighting against. Instead of canceling each other, we should be canceling vote blue no matter who. <laughs> That's what we should cancel. And that is your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a share. Please give it a thumbs up and share it around. And make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Uh, this channel often gets suppressed because we don't particularly talk about things that, uh, that the algorithm deems is cool. <laughs> so uh, we depend on, uh, uh, or I depend on you guys uh, sharing it out to as many people as you possibly can. Um, there's going to be a bunch of cool stuff coming up on this channel. Uh, videos like this, more scripted history-based socio-political commentary. Uh, there's rantier videos about uh, current events, news. There, there's more uh, bite-sized videos about uh, specific topics. And there's going to be interviews coming up on this channel as well that I'm excited to share with you guys. So uh, there's going to be a bunch of cool stuff coming up on this channel. Uh, virtually every single day of the week, you can probably find some videos coming up on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed to that. Uh, and like I mentioned at the very top of the show, this was recorded in front of a, a live virtual audience. So if you would like to be part of a live virtual audience, you can totally do so by purchasing tickets and uh, and coming out to to hang out with us and, and take part in the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Uh, they happen on Fridays. Um, and, uh, at 9 PM, they're only five bucks and we donate half the proceeds to, uh, to a grassroots organization, venue, journalists, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and this video that you're watching right now, we donated half the ticket sales to a movement for a people's party. Uh, so if you would like to learn even more about them, if you would like to donate to them, you can do so at peoplesparty.org. The link is in the description below. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you guys at one of these events. I hope you guys will go grab your tickets. Go to krishmohan.com for those tickets. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N. Become a sustaining make member. Make a one-time donation. Buy an album. Go nuts with watching a bunch of these videos. Go crazy about it. Uh, but krishmohan.com is your one-stop shop for all things Krishmohan. Uh, I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll